I think I'm probably about, I don't know, 12% body fat, 11, 12. Yo, what is going on? New style of content, long overdue, by the way, in my opinion. I, I've, <laughs> look, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time sort of do a long form vlog style of video where I sort of take you into the gym with me and uh, tell you what I know. But the purpose of these videos is to just give you an inside look on exactly what it is that I do every single day uh, and what goes into being a, you know, a hopefully one day a maxed out uh, natty athlete. So yeah, I am a natural athlete. I'm not one of those natty guys that Look, I don't freaking care. Look, if somebody wants to use something, they can go use it. That's their deal. Not, not, my, uh, not my cup of tea. Um, it almost was at one point in my career, but I'll get into that in a second. But I, I just, I say that because I think the fitness industry could use more people who are natty and who are in the pursuit of maxing out their physique. You know what I mean? I think it's super important um, because, you know, look... It, Going down the road of using steroids as a young kid, because a lot of young, some of you guys who follow me, I mean, a lot younger than I am, you know, um, you know, you're 15, 16, whatever, you know, even 20, mid 20s, you would be making a huge mistake, in my opinion, to to start using steroids, especially at the younger ages. You know, those are those are issues that you will never come back from. Those are they bring on things and changes that you may not know that you're gonna get. Uh, consequences that you may not know, uh, you may not be able to make a proper judgment yet on whether it's good or not for you. So if you're hearing this, I'm just going to try to show you what I've been able to do and I hope that it inspires you, you know. Uh, but like I said, I almost used, I almost fell down that, that track of life and I'm so glad that I didn't. So for those of you who don't know, I've been training for 16 years, okay, and I've been bodybuilding throughout the entire time. Now, bodybuilding was not my main pursuit, okay, I, I, I always did bodybuilding, and I always took it super seriously, but I actually wanted to be the strongest man in the world, and I came really freaking close, I mean, all things considered, okay, compared to the average person uh, going into the gym and trying to get strong, so I actually became a professional heavyweight strongman as an undersized natural guy, okay, and the, the reason I took on such a monumental task was because I was lazy, man. Dude, I was such a lazy sack as, <laughs> as a younger kid, like 15, 16 years old. You know, I, I, I just didn't really respect myself, you know? And I wanted something that I could put myself into 100% and know that I was putting in 100%. And, you know, it just, I did. And the pursuit of strongman, the pursuit of the seemingly impossible was what really set me on fire, man. That was, that was the thing that, that, that sort of just, it drove me because I don't care if I'm undersized. I don't care if nobody thinks that I can do it. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to achieve what nobody else thinks I can achieve. And, it, and that fuel, that mental fuel really worked. Uh, it drove me to become absolutely meticulous with my training, my diet. I, I had every single meal down to the freaking minute every single day, and I never missed. Not once did I miss. I made sure for like, this was 10 years of just absolute all-out dedication. I was sold. Long story short, I was going to use steroids at one point. My goal was to max out my strength as a natural guy, get as big as possible as a natural guy, and then at one point I was going to flip the switch and then start taking them. Well, unfortunately, I hurt my back, and I could no longer deadlift over 800 pounds anymore. Um, yeah, I was able to attain that natty. Um, it's possible if you have really, really good leverages and you train like an absolute savage. I um, dabbled in CrossFit for a while after that because I'm... You know, if I can't lift big weights, maybe I'll just do a ton of reps. You know, that was my that was my thought process. Then I started doing this long or short form content. I had a video pop off on TikTok, and I saw that as my ticket out of being freaking broke. I knew that that was my opportunity to to really make something of all this knowledge that I had. 
And when I started posting, you know, I thought I knew some stuff, and I did. I knew a lot more, I guess, than the average person. But when I started posting those videos and they started going mega viral, I knew that if I was going to be putting myself out there and I wanted to be an authority, if you will, I had to know my stuff. And so I had no problem in admitting what I didn't know. And I took it upon myself over the past few years to really, really start educating myself a whole lot more. Because look, I want to max out my physique. I think I've still got some muscle left to gain, you know? So I'm going to show you what it's going to take for me as a natural guy to do that. I think it's important for you to understand really the difference. Like, like why? Why can't you just train like somebody who's enhanced? If you're a natural lifter, why can't you do that? Well, honestly, because taking steroids changes the rules. It really does. It changes what it takes in a lot of regards. Now, it changes what you can get away with. Okay, so I want you to think of it like this. Being a natural athlete, okay, you have to, if you want to max out your physique, get as, squeeze every last little bit of muscle onto your frame that you possibly can. It's like walking a tightrope, right? Like you have to know what you're doing. You can't do too much and you can't do too little because if you do, it's going to throw everything off. It really is a balancing act. If you are enhanced, you can get away with way more sets, way more reps, way, way different methods of training. As long as you go into the gym and you train like a like, I'm not taking anything away from enhanced guys. I'm not saying they're lazy. I'm saying that the finer details are not nearly as important for an enhanced athlete. Now, I'm doing this while in a cutting phase. I just started a cutting phase, okay? So I'm, I'm pretty dang lean, all right? I'm, I don't know, 12-ish percent body fat, respectably lean, but not crazy lean. I, I want to get down... I'm not sure what I want to get down to. You know, I'd like to get down into the single digits, but I don't know how crazy I want to go with it. I'm going to do as little as humanly possible in order to stimulate the muscle, to let my body know, hey, keep this muscle around, we're still using it, don't get rid of it. That's it. Once I've accomplished that goal, that's all the session's about. I'm not going to be adding muscle during a cut, really. I'm just trying to keep this freaking stuff around, okay? But if you're a beginner, or you're somebody who's coming back after a long layoff, you know, maybe you've been injured and you're getting back into the gym, then you can be on a cut, lose fat, and build muscle at the same time. Your goal should be to always do the smallest amount of work possible in order to get the desired result, okay? Because then your body's gonna have to recover from less and you get all of the benefits of the growth, okay? So we're gonna expound on all this stuff a lot more as time goes on. For right now, let's get into the gym. Let's freaking hit it. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a movement that uh, I've only done for a few weeks before, uh, this, these past few weeks, and it feels freaking awesome. We're starting out with the lats. Now, when you train your lats in any given session, it's a good idea, if you wanna cover pretty much all of your bases, to train with a horizontal row, with your arm held into your side, and also when you're doing like a pull-up variation or a pull-down variation where your arms are coming from overhead down into the side of your body like this. So you got a horizontal row and a vertical pull with your arms to the outside in the frontal plane. Now I'm not gonna be doing tons of sets, I'm only doing three sets of this, okay? And what my goal is, is gonna be shooting for three sets in the five to eight rep range coming within one rep of failure. I always use straps, even with my pull downs in my rows. So this is just gonna be a nice little warm up here. Just sort of see what the weight's gonna do. If I were to be straight on like this and I row, my elbow would start creeping out to the side. I don't want that. I wanna train the lats. That's gonna be more upper back. So I sort of come over here a bit, almost on the corner of the pad. I rest fully into the pad and then pull back. Mm-hmm. 
That might have been a little close to failure. That's good. Every set for me is like an event, okay? Like I'm treating it like I'm maxing out. Like I, I turn on the music, I get ready, and when that, that one moment in the song hits, dude, it's just, it's just all out. I have to try to not go to failure. It is so ingrained in me to push with every fiber of my being on every single set, because otherwise I feel like I didn't really work that hard. When you push your body to failure, you're gonna fatigue your central nervous system to a pretty dang high degree. And you need, to, you, need to, you need to view your central nervous system as basically the engine that's driving and powering the car. Your car would be your muscles. If your engine is fatigued, overheated, it's not gonna be able to push the muscles as hard as they possibly can. You see what I'm trying to say? I'll tell you what, this gym just started coming here. It's dead all the freaking time in the middle of the day, like dead, dead, like more so than other gyms I've been to. It's always freaking nice. How do you guys feel about leaving the courtesy plate on? I was scrolling through TikTok the other day and I saw some kid saying that he likes to leave a courtesy plate on, you know, so that the next person doesn't have to put the obligatory one plate. And I sort of, I kind of just, I don't know, I done, it hit me because I always feel conflicted. I'm like, I'm doing somebody a service by leaving it on, but at the same time, if somebody sees me leave it, they're gonna think I'm just some jerk not cleaning up my weight. Okay, so second movement. We're now going from a horizontal pull, training the upper portion of the lat, that's what that did. The upper portion, the thoracic division of your lat. Um, now we're gonna be training more of the lower lat. Pull-ups are a great movement. Um, <clears throat> you can do seated pull-downs if you use a wide grip. The top half of the movement is the most important for the lats. And you wanna make sure that the lats have tension on them at the top. So if I move my hands out, okay, I'm going to have to fight to be pulling my arms into my side at the very top of the movement. So that's why it's a good idea if you wanna train your lats the most effectively in a pull-up for how we're trying to do them, a wider grip, really making sure you spend time in the top position. Watch my shoulders at the bottom. There's not a man that I fear. There's nobody here that can stop me. Cause I'm in a league of my own. Y'all can just sit back and watch me. They know who I am, they can't maintain. Don't stay in your lane, I'ma set it straight. See what I did there? At the bottom of the movement, I allowed my shoulders to be pulled up. It's totally fine. You don't have to keep your shoulders back and down and held down like this. Don't worry about it, it's an old myth. Only doing two sets of this, because again, I'm just trying to stimulate, keep the muscle around, not trying to absolutely annihilate it. Um, you know, so that means I'm only doing five sets of lats in this workout. But again, if you're making each one of those sets count by your full rest periods and intelligent rep schemes, that's all you need. Come on. That's it. Toast. Oh man. That kills. Been a while since I've done pull-ups like that. You know, it's, it's tough. It's tough to control that top portion of the movement. But you notice, I said my goal was to touch my chest to the bar. But I wasn't touching my chest to the bar. It's really tough for me to, because my body structure, you may have it too, 
really, really long arms. Particularly, my forearms are really long in comparison you know, to what most people's forearms are, which is one of the reasons why I was so good at deadlifting and picking up stuff off the ground. Really long arms, less, it's less distance to pull it. But this, you know, if I had short stubby arms here, and my fists were actually at this position and not all the way up here, I could be at my chest. So I need to pull all the way down here, you know, another three, four inches, whatever, compared to a short stubby arm person, it really does make a difference. Okay, so we've got a very similar mach machine uh, to the first one that we did. I really enjoy the way this feels because you wanna train your upper back. But instead of trying to keep your elbows tucked in, you can allow them to flare out a little bit. Just in the pad. Not pulling off. It's a big mistake I see. Vader. Oh. This portion here at the very end range of motion, just because my elbows are pulled back, it's not good enough. I need to make sure I'm pinching together at the top, really bringing everything together. So that's the most important thing. So I'm choosing a weight that really allows me to do that. Like I could load up way more weight and heave, hoe it and pull here without really retracting versus here where I'm really getting the upper, the mid upper traps involved. Um, rhomboids, all that stuff, rear delts as well. When we're doing those rows, where is the rear delt challenged the most? The rear delt is challenged the most at the very top of the movement, right? So I'm gonna choose a movement where the rear delt is challenged more at the bottom when my arms are straighter. Because on those other movements, when you're doing a row, there's nothing on the rear delts at the bottom, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle my body so that at the bottom of the range of motion where my arm is across my body here, there's about a 90 degree angle you see this between my arm and the cable. That means there's more tension here in this part of the movement. As I go out, you can see there's really no angle. If you look down, there's really no angle here. I could stand here all day. So at the end range of motion here, no tension, which is the opposite of what we did over there. I'm keeping the cable in line with my arm, okay? I'm not down here. See how the cable's below my arm? See how it's above my arm here? In line, just like that. Going straight across. As the weeks go on, I'm not gonna be able to get any kind of pump. We're doing the single arm preacher curl here. And this is probably, if I had to choose one movement to do for the biceps for the rest of my life, this would be it. It challenges the biceps through the most effective range of motion, which is more down here. So I like doing it on an inclined bench like this because it kind of gives me that ending point where the dumbbell hits and I'm not sort of left straightening my arm all the way out and kind of, I don't know, it just feels a little weird to straighten the arm out on a preacher curl. I feel like I'm gonna snap something up. So this just gives me a good little ending point to kind of ease into at the very end range. <clears throat> just feels safer.
final exercise here. We're going to be doing a reverse curl. Now, <clears throat> reverse curls, they are um, very uh, effective at training. Probably, I think, it's the biggest muscle of your forearm, the brachioradialis. It's this bad boy that goes from here all the way down to here. You can see where it, in, where it attaches down into here. Um, so this muscle is trained best when it's tensioned at the top end range of motion. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, remember how I was telling you on the rear delt fly where you can change your angle and tension the rear delt at different positions. So for this, instead of training where it's really difficult at the bottom, I'm gonna make it difficult at the top. But how I'm gonna do that is by bending over. You see, when I curl up to the top here and I'm standing straight up, you can see that my form is pretty much underneath the weight. And that is not tension. It's not really, okay? But if I were to take the weight while standing here and then bend over, now how freaking hard would that be to hold? I mean, it, you wouldn't be able to do it very long, which is why when I do these, you're gonna see, watch, I'll just do a set right now. Nice wide stance, double overhand grip. I like to hunch down so that the weight is kind of, my hands are kind of on the inside of my knees. And then I like to curl straight up to my eyes. Just like that, I'm kind of sitting back onto my heels. Okay, so I'm not hunched over here, kind of back in an athletic stance, so that it's easier on my body to hold that top position, because the weight's over my center of mass. One. Two. Three. There is nothing better, in my opinion, on a, an aesthetic arm than having a wide forearm here. It just, it just gives you that, that diesel look. And that's actually something that I developed primarily doing strongman by, you know, picking up logs like this. I really had to, it's almost like doing a reverse curl all the time, but that just, it just makes your arm look real thick. So instead of just focusing on the bicep, a lot of times like guys do, Getting this bad boy right here, that thickness on the outside of here, really just gives your arm a totally different look. So I went down and weighed a little bit because that was a little bit too too ballsy of a choice. It's been a while since I've done these, so I'm just not as strong at them right now. So after a few weeks, I'll definitely be able to get back up to 90s, 100s, could even get up to 110. But I don't know, with this style of form, really making the top and heavier by hunching over, I'm not, I'm not as concerned with moving uh, the crazy heavy weight. I'm trying to be a little bit more strict. So. Kind of pausing at the top, if you notice. not something that I am used to doing, but, you know, doing real bodybuilding poses. I, uh, I mostly just wing it from my videos that you see. And, uh, oh, we're gonna kind of wing it here. I've seen a couple things from guys online, so let's see what we got. So, I'm gonna do this one. This is probably my favorite. You can see, I don't know, I think I'm probably about, I don't know, 12% body fat, 11, 12. I'm, I'm pretty lean, but see, I hold, I actually have a bunch of loose skin from when I did strongman down here, and I definitely hold fat in this area. So this is fat, I kind of want to, just kind of want to get that gone for one time in my career, really. And I hold a bunch of fat here, so I don't know. I'm thinking, thinking I'm at about 11, 12, and I, if I can get down to like single digits, I don't, know. I, I don't know exactly what I want to get to, but let's see. After six weeks. That's not bad. This was one that I actually kind of made up for one of my 
forearm videos and I just thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. You can see the brachial or the brachialis here. You know that muscle that lies in between your bicep and tricep. Here, let's see. There, there it is. See that line right here? There's a line right here, and there's like this little sliver in that spot. All right, I just got a question on Instagram, did a Q&A, and somebody just asked, when doing five to eight reps, when do you know when to go up in weight? Dude, you should be trying to go up in weight every single opportunity that you have. Like, that's the benefit of pushing as hard as you can, even if you're leaving one rep left in the tank and sometimes do failure. Like, if you're doing that and you're taking care of everything else in terms of recovery, you're naturally going to feel stronger as time goes on. Look, I think, a, try thinking of it this way. Even though you're a bodybuilder, you should be a strength athlete who just happens to be bodybuilding. You see what I'm saying? Like, like what, what do powerlifters do? They are constantly trying to move more weight week by week by week. They're trying to get stronger. And yeah, look, body, uh, powerlifters may not be the best example for muscle growth, but that's because they don't perpetually train super, super close to failure. Usually, good powerlifting training leaves some gas in the tank. They, they try to keep the weight moving pretty quickly no matter what. And that's the difference between powerlifting and bodybuilding training to a large extent is how close to failure you're pushing, okay? So try treating it like you are, as long as you're using good form and moving properly, try making it your goal to just be a strength athlete, be stronger each week. Now you're not always gonna be able to lift more weight, okay? It's not always gonna happen. Some weeks you may even be a little bit weaker than previous weeks. That's just the way that it is sometimes. It, it's not like you need to be super scientific where you're adding 2.5 pounds each in every single workout, and that's the only way you know that you're gonna beat them. No. It's just going in there, having your set rep and rep range, keeping track of what you did in weeks prior, and trying to break your personal records. That's what it is. Pick the five to eight rep range, four to six rep range, whatever it is that you like on the lower end, and try to beat it week in and week out. That's how you build muscle, as long as you're eating properly, sleeping properly, and you got the rest of your training in order, and you're not doing too freaking much. I'm gonna shower up real quick. I'm gonna take the wife. Just got married, by the way. Just got married. We went down to the courthouse. We didn't have a big wedding ceremony. We, we couldn't wait anymore. And we didn't wanna, we didn't wanna wait. Uh, we, we decided to go about it a little more of a traditional way, you know, before we actually moved in together. You know, so we didn't want to wait anymore. So we uh, got married at the courthouse. She moved in. And uh, we're going to have a wedding ceremony um, after the fact in about five weeks now. So that's going to fall in the middle of the cut. And you best believe I am not cutting that freaking week. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep it under control. But I'm not going to hold myself back, you know, with that, when I got all friends. and It's once in a lifetime thing. You know, look, you can be as dedicated as you want, but, you know, you only get, hopefully, married once. You know what I mean? So, definitely going to enjoy myself. Anyways, guys, that's all for today. Hope you all enjoyed this video. And uh, till next time, tomorrow is legs. So, I will see you then, and we'll hit it hard.